this hour. Joining me now is Ensei Ufat, the CEO of the New Georgia Project, a nonpartisan effort to register and civically engage Georgia voters, and Democratic strategist Don Calloway. He is the founder of the National Voter Protection Action Fund, a nonpartisan social welfare organization formed to combat voter suppression and support election protection efforts. It's great to have both of you with us. Uh, and I'd like to start with you because the question that I was talking to my reporters about politically is now what happens? How much of an impact does President Biden's speech have? Does his speech alone make a difference? Or are voting right activists like yourself and others looking for a more concerted political push now? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, that I would say Americans are looking for a more concerted push. Uh, it is clear uh, in his from his speech that the president understands the history that what got us to this moment. It is also clear uh, that he understands threat to our democracy uh, that is being presented by these 400 bills that have been introduced in 47 states. What is not clear is what he intends to do uh, to bring his colleagues to the table to ensure a, pass, a path for uh, a path for passage for S1, that we didn't hear about filibuster reform at all. Um, and so, again, understanding the history of this moment, understanding how important uh, it is to protect the right to vote. Listen, and he threw out some really key and important dates, uh, some really key and important numbers. I want to talk about 537 votes, right? The mm. number when the Supreme Court uh, in 2000 uh, stopped the recount in Florida, right? I want to talk about 1982 when um, Reagan reauthorized, like got his party together and reauthorized the Voting Rights Act and called it the crown jewel of American liberties. I want to talk about 2006 when George W. Bush, again, despite attempts to water down the Voting Rights Act amongst his party, passed a clean reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act uh, by a majority of the folks in the House and the Senate, right? That if you're talking about doing everything that you can to make sure that we protect American democracy, right? We look to Crispus Attucks, who took two bullets in the chest in defense of American democracy. John Lewis, whose name was invoked, who took a brick to the face, right? What Reagan and, and Bush, W. Bush, who, again, stood up to their party because they understood how important that is. What I did not hear is what the president of the United States in this moment is willing to do in order to make sure that we pass uh, the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. Don, to you for your reaction, uh, both uh, to uh, what the president said, as well as to this point uh, that is being brought up, that you know some would argue that because voting rights legislation is unlikely to pass due to the Senate filibuster, including some members, perhaps within the broader Democratic Party, who don't want to see the filibuster uh, broken, so to speak, should the president spend his political capital elsewhere, like on infrastructure? What do you say to that? And is this uh, worth fighting the battle for voting rights over, even if it is a losing fight? Voting rights is the only battle yes. worth fighting. And my dear friend Insay knows that uh, as, as well as I do. There is nothing else. There is no further progress without voting rights. I heard some really, really key things and some encouraging things in this speech. First of all, I heard full-throated support for the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. That's great. But as of equal importance, I heard the president issue full-throated support for the For the People Act. Particularly in Democratic circles, the For the People Act includes more things like comprehensive financial reforms uh, in the political giving context. It includes some other things like, like um, with respect to uh, uh, the way we draw political maps and such. And it's far larger than the John Lewis Voting uh, Rights Act. So it was important to hear the White House put all debate to bed and say, we support both of these measures. The one thing I also heard that was extraordinarily important was him tell so he told Democrats that he support both of the voting reform bills, but he told Republicans, you can pass these voter suppression bills in all the states that you want to, but Merrick Garland will combat them with the full support and the full machinations of the Department of Justice. That's extraordinarily important because Republicans are going to have to make a decision. Do we put our political money behind our candidates in 2022, or do we put that money behind supporting these ill-fated bills at the federal courthouse behind, uh, excuse me, against the, the, uh, the, the opposition of the federal government. 
The one thing I echo everything that NSA said, the one thing I did not say, and I have to plug this as a resident of the District of Columbia, I did not hear support for making the District of Columbia the 51st state. Mm -hmm. And we're not really having a true and robust discussion about the state of American democracy until we're talking about making D.C. the 51st state and Puerto Rico and other territories if they want it. But I know we want it here in D.C. And that's fundamental to our right to be considered as full citizens of this country. To Don's point and say, do you think that the Justice Department waging this legal fight against the uh, state measures that are taking place to, uh, by some accounts, suppress the vote? Uh, do you think it will have a significant impact? Is it enough? If not, why not? Um, I don't think that it's enough. Now, it is absolutely important. It's critical, right, that we are doubling the size of the Voting Rights Division in the Department of Justice. That's important. While we saw during the previous administration an attempt to let that function of the federal government atrophy. So I do not want to minimize the importance of that. I think that that is a wonderful sign uh, from the administration, and I applaud it. I applaud it. And it is not enough. We are talking about anti-voting bills in over a dozen states that have already become law. And we're talking about an additional 30 states where it is being debated right now. That if what, what we're what if, if we just rely on the Department of Justice or if we just rely on activists to wage the fight for democracy in state houses across the country, that essentially we're going to be playing whack-a-mole and that it will take a very long time for us to get to a place where there is a federal standard for how elections are conducted, a federal standard for how maps are drawn throughout the redistricting process. And we do not have the time for that. Listen, I absolutely want an infrastructure bill to be passed. I 100 percent want the American Jobs Act and the American Families Act to be passed. And I don't see a path forward for any of those if we are not going, if we don't have the power to stop this, this attack on